So over the last uh, seven or eight years, I've been concentrating particularly on using the study of the anatomy of the brain in order to try and complement what I found in those initial and late phases of Alzheimer's disease with, with energy metabolism. You remember there are those parts of the brain called the parietal lobes here and the frontal lobes later, which showed a very significant amount of loss of energy metabolism, suggesting a, a, a loss of function there and perhaps loss of neurons. There was always a paradox about that because the pathologists clearly showed us that inside the brain, here in the middle bits, so if I take that off, you'll see here something called the hippocampus. It's called the hippocampus because it looks like a seahorse, which is very critical for memory. But that's where the first parts and cortex around the hippocampus, that's where the first problems arose in the pathology. So why were we not seeing those problems in the function? And <clears throat> so <clears throat> what I did was, um, when we began to start analysing images with these SPM routines, and anatomical images, one of the first things we started to do was to begin to look at, at Alzheimer's disease. And lo and behold, uh, we found that these early areas were showing atrophy much earlier than the cortical areas which were showing hypermetabolism. So the anatomical progression of structure seemed to mirror the pathological progression much better than the functional images, but the functional images gave us a much better analysis of what was going wrong with the brain. The next phase was the issue of whether we could detect Alzheimer's disease before it became manifest. And that was a very important question because we knew from pathologists in another neurodegenerative disorder known as Parkinson's disease that you needed to lose 60 to 70 percent of a specific set of neurons before you got your first symptoms. Now clearly if you're a pharmacologist wishing to stop degeneration, if you start with 60 or 70 percent of neurons gone, you're pretty much on a hiding to nothing. But consider if you could find a situation where only 20% of the neurons have degenerated. In that situation, you have absolutely no symptoms. You still have a considerable amount of degeneration to go before you begin to get symptoms. And if you could just slow down the degeneration, as these are diseases of old age, you might be able to postpone the onset of symptoms beyond the average lifespan. Now, that would be a cure, a very peculiar notion of a cure, not the sort of thing a bacteriologist would consider a cure, the sort of thing people treating AIDS might consider a cure, because that's, they're postponing the onset. So that became a, a really serious question. And it was difficult to see how to solve that problem. And then um, you hit on the idea that the thing to do would be to use a similar degenerative disorder, but where we could had an, an external marker of whether the disease was going to occur or not. And we hit on this idea of studying Huntington's disease because there you can take a single blood sample and depending on the, the genetic makeup of a particular gene on a particular chromosome, we can predict with 100% whether you're going to get the disease or not at some time in your lifetime if you live long enough. So we took people, actually we took a set of scans that were done by um, neurologists who are experts in Huntington's disease in Tasmania, where there's an awful lot of this disease. We brought the scans over here and analysed them with our packages. And they were scans of 36 people, all of whom were normal. But we had their genotype as well. So we could divide them up into those with and without the mutation of the Huntington gene and we could compare their scans, and we saw atrophy. And not only did we see an atrophy in those who had the mutation compared to those who didn't, but we also saw the atrophy specifically in those regions that the pathologists were going to point out when these people died and they examined their brains. So already the chordate nucleus showed some atrophy in other parts of the brain. So that clearly showed us that there was an anatomical marker of the disease before it became manifest. And so that's proof of principle. Should be able to do that.